On top of that, wound up in the mental institution, did 90 days in fucking rehab at Wavelengths in Huntington Beach, did 30 days in rehab in Florida. I'm even more depressed because all I want to do is fucking skate and I have muscle cramps, I'm dizzy as shit, and I'm a fat fucking sweaty meatball. So like, I'm t getting off of all these medicines on Thanksgiving and I've been off of them ever since and now I finally feel like my legs are back and I'm really stoked to fucking be in Southern California avoiding the winter in Philadelphia. The court case that is going on right now with Bam Margera and his former crew in Jackass is something that has been getting a lot of tension for a variety of reasons. Not the least of which was that at the time, no one thought that one of the crew would sue one of their own. But after a lot of revelations about the lawsuit filed, some big questions started to get asked, including that he might have been fired after being forced to sign an illegal wellness program and that the person in charge of that program might not have been an actual medical professional as claimed. We'll break it all down for you, but before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Number 4. The Case and Overview Before we dive into the heavy details and new revelations of the case, we need to give you a loose overview of all that's happened. In short, Bam Margera has been with the Jackass crew since literally the beginning with the TV show. He was there for the three main movies and he even did some spin-offs that were really popular. But like many of his co-workers, he struggled with various things due to his experiences on the show, all of which were well documented. Then when it came to make Jackass Forever, Bam Margera was told to sign a wellness agreement to ensure that he was clean and able to perform for the fourth film. But while still filming everything, Bam was fired. And as a result of that, he filed a lawsuit citing various things, including that he was forced out, that the wellness program was demanded of by those in charge, in this case Paramount, and that he should be given justice for all that happened to him, not the least of which was being forced to repeatedly take drug tests multiple times a day and being forced into rehab against his will. On the surface, to some at least, this seemed like a case of a bitter ex-employee trying to get revenge or at least a payday. This notion was bolstered by events that happened after the lawsuit was filed. But fast forward to now, there is much more to this story than we realized, including the fact that the chief person in charge of wellness on the set of the fourth film was not as qualified as he made himself out to be. Number 3. Jed Wallace. Who is Jed Wallace? Well, as we found out in court file documents, he's someone who was never brought in for any of the previous films or even the TV show. And as the files from Margera's lawyer state, he presented himself in a falsified way. The talent agreement Margera signed referred to a wellness program to be administered by a person unknown to Margera previously named Jed Wallace. Wallace is at best a public relations agent for treatment facilities, but not a qualified treatment counselor himself. Yet he was the individual hired and paid by parents amount to administer the wellness program. Margera believed Wallace was retained for his sole benefits, was an expert in substance abuse rehabilitation, and had the experience and education to lead the team that was assisting in his recovery. But Wallace was unqualified to supervise or play any role at all in Margera's recovery. Wallace claims to have over 17 years of experience working in the substance abuse and behavioral health fields. What he fails to tell this court, and what Margera was certainly unaware of, is that his experience working with these entities is as a public relations consultant. Indeed, Wallace's LinkedIn page makes no mention of any education, training, experience, or certifications he has as a treatment counselor. Instead, it identifies him as the owner of Street Relations Incorporated, which is a media, communications, and branding consulting firm specializing in corporate visibility. Incredibly, Wallace appears to have lied about his educational background in his declaration filed in this case, claiming to have graduated from Fordham University, although no such evidence can be found supporting this contention. Wallace can he put together a team to assist in Margera's wellness program, which included a psychiatric nurse practitioner with the ability to prescribe medications, whom Margera had worked with in the past, and a DiPietro. Who was that? Well, they went into detail with that too. Wallace tries to push off onto nurse DiPietro the selection of any medications Margera was required to take, but Margera at all times believed Paramount's employee Wallace required this, as it was he who forced Margera to ingest the drugs on daily FaceTime calls. The wellness program that Paramount put Wallace in charge of, provided that if Margera did not, among other things, submit to daily Soberlink alcohol testing three times a day at random times, submit to weekly random drug panel testing, and take medication every morning while on a FaceTime call with Wallace and or his team members, Margera would face immediate termination from the Jackass franchise. As a result, Margera suffered from intense anxiety and stress in an effort to abide by the wellness program's impossible terms, as he believed the slightest deviation would subject him to immediate termination effectively ending his ability to support himself and his family. This mental anguish took its soul on Margera, but he nonetheless
nonetheless persevered in abiding by defendant's stringent conditions, which were clearly not designed with his recovery in mind. And should you think that this didn't have an effect on Bam, they made it very clear that he was very much affected and that it could have been prevented if the wellness program was, you know, made for wellness. Margera's best efforts notwithstanding, the prescription cocktail mandated by defendants, coupled with the acute mental distress directly caused by the wellness agreement, led Margera to a dark place. While he followed the wellness agreement and wellness programs dictates, he suffered from suicidal ideations as was foreseeable. So what we have here is a situation in which there may have been a man who wasn't medically trained in ways that could have helped someone like Bam or any of the others on the team, should something have happened to them. And the regiment that he made Bam take not only was mentally taxing, but it led him to a place where he suffered and arguably could have hurt himself in a way that there is no going back from. And then their quote only option was to fire him? That doesn't sound very kosher now, does it? To be clear, the court documents provided referenced many sworn statements, including one by Jed Wallace, where they made it clear that these things were said in reference and yet according to him were lies brought to the court. Number two, how this helps Bam's case. So how does this help Bam's case? Simply put, if proven definitively in court, and we must note that Jed Wallace and the lawyers for the Jackass team and Paramount deny these allegations and have offered their version of events alongside an explanation as to the claims made against them, this would mean that the wellness agreement that was made was not only invalid, which Bam's lawyers already made claim that it was draconian in its conception, but that it was overseen by someone who was not qualified. And in the medical field, if you're not qualified to be watching over someone, that makes you liable for malpractice amongst other things. And if you're curious as to what the definition of malpractice is, that would be improper, illegal, or negligent professional activity or treatment, especially by a medical practitioner, lawyer, or public official. And that would most definitely qualify here if proven in the courts, because that would take not only how Jed Wallace lied about his qualifications and how he was, quote, able to help Bam, but that would also fall on Paramount because they were the ones who hired him and approved of this plan. The devil, as they say, is in the very tiny details, and these details might just make this case. Number one, legal battles. As of right now, the case with Bam and his former co-stars and Paramount is still going on. A major hurdle was crossed in regards to the anti-SLAPP suit that was filed by Paramount's team to try and strike this case down before it went any further. A judge noted that the case met the minimum to be considered not a SLAPP suit, and thus the case will progress. Should these revelations prove viable in court, this could be what Bam needs to prove that he did everything right and that Paramount did many things wrong. And there you have it everyone, a look at all the new details that are coming out from the Bam Argera case straight from the horse's mouth on both sides of the case. Do you see this as proof of what Bam has been maintaining? Do you feel that this could be beneficial to all that's been claimed by him and his team? Let us know what you think in the comments down below, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.